Allen begins life without Kyler Murray, a giant showdown in 5A in Waco, and Manville and Spring Westfield have a prospect off. I'm Greg Tepper with TexasFootball.com. It's week one of the Texas high school football season, and we're fixing to pick them. Welcome in to Fixin' to Pick'em, TexasFootball.com's guide to the high school football weekend. I am Greg Tepper of Dave Campbell's Texas Football. Thank you for tuning in. Going to run through the biggest games in a giant week one in the 2015 Texas high school football season. And we have to start down in Waco. 7.30 p.m. Friday night at McLean Stadium in Waco. It's, uh, it's DCTF's number one team in 5A, Alito, taking on number two, Cedar Park. Doesn't get any bigger than this. The three keys we've got our eye on. Number one, Alito's search for playmakers. Uh, you know, we kind of take Alito's offense for granted. They just tend to score a bajillion points. But if you look at this year's team, uh, they're missing a key, a few key pieces. Luke Bishop, their quarterback, is gone. Uh, wide receiver Ryan Newsom is gone. Who's going to take over? They've got a new quarterback in by the name of Dylan Davis. going to be interesting to see what he can do. Number two, a new look for Cedar Park. Coach Joe Willis is gone. New coach Carl Asbeck is in. What are they going to look like? We know they're going to have athletes. Guys like Jav Gidry, guys like Jack Grimm, uh, Augustine Tombe at the defensive tackle spot. Going to be very interesting to see exactly what the Timberwolves look like. And finally, thirdly, Alito's defense against Cedar Park's offense. Alito's defense, I think, is, is pretty underrated with Jack McAdams uh, and Larry Brown leading the way. Are they going to be able to slow down what should be a pretty polished attack from Cedar Park? It's going to be very interesting. Last year it was a great game. For me, I think if this game is played 10 weeks from now, I think Alito wins. But for now, I think Cedar Park is the more complete package at this moment. And I think in week one, that matters. I think the Timberwolves beat the three time, the two-time defending champs. Next, let's mosey on up to the DFW area and a clash of titans. Denton Geyer and Allen, 7.30 p.m. Friday at Allen's newly reopened Eagle Stadium. The cracks in the concrete are gone and the mecca of Texas high school football is open again. Here are the three keys uh, to that game. First of all, quarterback controversy in Allen? Question mark? Because you look at this. We are not going to replace a guy like Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is one of the all-time greatest players in Texas high school football history. You're not going to replace him. But they've got some nice options to put back there. And I say options. A lot of people thought that it was a, for, it was a done deal whenever Seth Green transferred from Minnesota down to uh, Allen. Of course, he's an Oregon commit, uh, one of the best prospects in the state. But Coach Tom Westerberg has not handed him the starting job. He likes Mitchell Jonke, the guy who's kind of waited his turn behind Kyler Murray. And, he, you know, Coach Westerberg's an old school guy. I think you're going to see them split time. Uh, whoever's back there is going to have the benefit of operating behind one of the best offensive lines in the state, led by Greg Little. Secondly, who's the second best player on Denton Geyer? You know, offensively, Denton Geyer's going to hum. They've got Sean Robinson, who's just one of the most fascinating quarterbacks in the state. He can run. He can throw. He dazzled as a sophomore. He should be even better as a junior. Uh, but this year, I look at this and I wonder who's the second best player. Running back Anthony Taylor is gone. Who's the second option for this Geyer team? It remains to be seen. I think we're going to get a lot of answers on Friday night at Allen Eagle Stadium. And finally underrated defenses. We talk so much about the offenses, and the offenses are going to score. They're eventually going to get in gear. How long it takes depends a lot on how well the defense gets them the ball back, and these defenses are excellent. Allen defensive back Jalen Jones, one of the very best in the state. Geyer's got a linebacker by the name of Mike Carrillo, who you need to keep your eye on. These are two very underrated defenses that may end up stealing the show in this showdown. So what do I think? Don't pick against a streak. 43 straight for Allen. They're playing in their first home game in a year in front of what's going to be a raucous crowd. I think Allen gets the win. Geyer's still going to have a chance at a state title, but for now, I think that Allen starts 1-0. Next, let's get on down to H-Town. Space City is the host for a big-time showdown of prospect-laden teams as Spring Westfield visits Manville at 7.30 p.m. on Friday. What to expect in this one? Well, first of all, prospects galore 
Uh, I don't know if you're into recruiting, but if you are, this is the place to be. Whether it's Ed Oliver, the defensive lineman from Spring Westfield, or De'Eric King, the quarterback from Manville, whether it's Tyree Cleveland, the wide receiver for Westfield, or it's Reggie Hempel, the wide receiver uh, for Manville, these are two teams that are as loaded with prospects as any two in the state. If you're a recruiting nerd, this is the place to be on Friday night. Secondly, the number one priority for Manville is making sure Ed Oliver does not take over this game. Spring Westfield has defensive lineman Ed Oliver, a Houston commit who I think is the best defender in the state. A guy who is just a bulldog in the middle. He can do everything you want from a defensive line uh, standpoint. He can stop the run. He can rush the passer. He can make big plays when you need him. If anybody's going to single-handedly take over this game, it's Spring Westfield and Manville ha- or Spring Westfield defensive lineman Ed Oliver, and Manville has to make sure that doesn't happen. And finally, we got to see Manville's defense step up. You know, Dylan Sterling Cole, the, the quarterback for Westfield, is quite the athlete. It's going to be up to guys like Deontay Anderson on this Manville on this Manville defense to step up and make plays. You know, a lot of attention paid to this offense at Manville, and for good reason. It's time for the defense to puff out their chest and say, "Hey." We got a little something, too. In the end, I got to go with Manville. They start the year number five in the state in DCTF's rankings, and I think that they are every bit as worthy of that ranking uh, as any team. I think they've got a legit chance to bring a state title home to the Houston area, and I think it starts with a win over Spring Westfield. But it's a huge week across the state of Texas. Oh, we can't just touch on three games. We got to get to the lightning round. Texas versus the world, Euless Trinity against De La Salle out of California. Of course I'm picking Trinity. You think I'm picking some California team on TexasFootball.com? You're crazy. Down the Alamo City, San Antonio O'Connor and San Antonio Reagan. Two words, Kellen Mond. I think he leads Reagan to a win. Interesting cross-regional matchup between McAllen and Odessa Permian. Meeting in the middle in Converse. Got to go with Mojo Magic in this one, although this is going to be a fun matchup. Back up to the DF Dub with a battle of DeSoto and Arlington Martin. Got to go with DeSoto. They're my pick to win a 6A D1 state championship. And with Tristan Wallace at the helm, you can understand why. Small school matchup, Franklin and Rogers. I love Franklin. More importantly, I like linebacker Will Phillips. He is the real deal. Even smaller schools, Goldthwaite and Mart. New look Mark gets the win for Kevin Hoffman's debut, but this is going to be a tight matchup. Way out in El Paso, it's Canatillo and El Paso, Franklin. You don't pick against the best team in El Paso, that's Canatillo. Central Texas, Wimberley at Lavernia. Tough road match here for Wimberley, but I think they get the win thanks to some big defense from defensive tackle Jack McGinty. And finally up in the panhandle, Bushland at Canadian. Got to go with that Air Canada attack. Quarterback Tanner Schaefer is the real deal. That's going to do it. Which games do we miss? Leave comments down below. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbells. I've been told to say that we have an Instagram account, whatever that means. And, of course, you can get in touch with us at the mothership, texasfootball.com. Thanks for watching Fixing the Pick'em. Happy football season. We'll see you next time.